Well, good morning. Oh, I thought New York was a little, I know it's early, but you know what? What the hell, let's just try that again. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Good morning. Mm, see, I knew book people had spirit. I'm very happy to be here to talk to you about one of my most favorite subjects on the planet, literature and the written word, and how it continues to evolve in our society. Let me start by saying I was a huge, voracious reader when I was a kid. Science fiction literature has always tended to be my body of literature of choice. And I think why that is, is because, well, for me, science fiction literature dares to ask what I consider to be two of the most important words in combination in language. Those words being, what if? Hmm? What if? The body of science fiction literature invites us, in fact, engages us on a process of imagining. Imagining the world that we ourselves would like to see, to inhabit, to explore. And so as a kid in Sacramento, California, I read a lot of science fiction books. It wasn't never, but it was rare during those early 60s for me to encounter heroes in the pages of those novels who looked like me. Now, I'm not going to say there weren't any heroes of color in science fiction. Not true. Arthur C. Clarke, uh, Ben Bova, there were some exceptions, but it wasn't the norm. And so, Gene Roddenberry's vision of the future was huge for me. What Gene's vision said was, by the virtue of Nichelle Nichols sitting on the bridge of the Starship Enterprise, there was going to be a place for me in that imagined future. And I felt incredibly excited by that possibility. I am a firm believer, ladies and gentlemen, in the link between that which we imagine and that which we create. In fact, I put it to you that the stories that we tell each other and have told each other throughout the history of the development of civilization are integrally important, inextricably linked to how we continue to invent the world in which we live. Case in point. You ready for a case in point? I believe that there was some kid watched all of those episodes of the original Star Trek. How many people watched episodes of the original Star Trek? A bunch of geeks, huh? <laughs> I'm a geek. I'm one of them. I used to watch those episodes of Star Trek and see Kirk pull out from that secret Velcroed place on his hip, <laughs> because apparently there are no pockets in the future. <laughs> and he would flip that thing out, he would flip it open, and he'd call Scotty on the ship, right? He'd call, Scotty, beam me up, right? Well, that kid grew up, became, let's say, an engineer, a designer, and is responsible for a product that is more prevalent today than the toaster. By a show of hands, how many of you have either used or been in the presence of someone using a flip cell phone? <laughs> that upon which we focus our attention is what we manifest into third dimension. The stories that we tell each other inform us about who we are, why we're here, and where we're going. That process never 
change. That circle is a part of every generation, every era, every culture. In humanity, it is through the telling of stories that we define who we are, who we are, why we're here, and what we're going to do while we're here. I had a very um, powerful awakening in my late teens, early 20s. You see, my mother was an English teacher, and I grew up in a house where reading was Fundamental. <laughs> I'll take it a step further. In my mother's house, you either read a book or you got hit with one. <laughs> she didn't care which. In her house, you were going to have an encounter with the written word. That's how, <laughs> that's how fundamental it was in Irma Jean's home. But I, I, I understood at a very elemental level how important making contact with the written word was for a human being, that it was a natural part of this process of exploration, exploration of self, exploration of the immediate world around me, exploration of the larger world out there. And when I was 19, I had left my mother's house, entered the Catholic seminary, and studied for the priesthood for a few years, was in the process of going through a major shift in terms of what I wanted to do, how I saw my place in the world, and discovered storytelling through theater arts. One thing led to another, and I found myself as a sophomore, second year student, being cast in the title role in what was known back in the day as a mini-series. Nobody knew what a mini-series was, but we sort of invented the miniseries as we went along, and I was cast as Kunta Kinte in the Alex Haley miniseries Roots, broadcast on ABC television. <laughs> January 28th, 1977, 35 years ago now. What was mind-blowing about that storytelling experience was I was able to see and experience through this very powerful means of telling our stories the transformative nature of literature when combined with a visual medium. In eight consecutive nights of television, I watched this nation change its idea of who we are around an issue that goes almost to the heart of everything that happens in this country, in this culture. And it was a peaceful revolution. It was a revolution of understanding. It was a revolution of, oh, I didn't know it was that way. It was a revolution of compassion. And I thought, my goodness, forget being a priest, this is far <laughs> more effective if you want to reach people. And so it made perfect sense to me a few years later when I was approached by some wonderful people, a woman named Twyla Liggett, who was a teacher working in public television. And the idea was to use the medium of television to steer children back in the direction of literature and the written word. Now, I was like, are you serious? L let me get this straight. You want to take television and get kids hooked on, hooked on, on books? She said, yeah, essentially, that's, that's the goal. I was like, you're either incredibly brilliant or very crazy. And as it turns out, she was a little bit of both. <laughs> but for 25 years, 
we had the opportunity to make that connection for kids, that stories are bridges to real world experiences, that you can pick up a book, you can go anywhere in the universe by using your imagination, and that your imagination is the key for the unlocking of experience. I had three major teachers on this journey. As far as storytellers go, I don't believe it gets any better than the man known as Alex Haley. Gene Roddenberry, as a science fiction visionary, need I say more? And Fred Rogers, who really took the time to take me under his wing and show me why he thought what he did was so important. You know, Fred Rogers was one of the most authentic human beings I ever encountered. When I first met Fred, I thought, wow, <laughs> that must be some kind of an act to keep up 24-7. But it became really clear to me very quickly that that was exactly who Fred Rogers was. He was that kind. He was that nice. He was that concerned. He was that present with you when you were in his presence. And he was there in that present manner whether you were five or 55. Fred was an authentic human being, which gave him that remarkable, laser-like ability to communicate the way he did. So here we are on the juncture, on the platform of a new way of telling stories, taking our eons-old story-telling journey to the next level, bringing it into the digital realm. And there's a lot of nervousness out there. I feel it. I encounter it. I see it every day. On some levels, it must have felt like it did in Hollywood in the late 50s, when television was coming in. And the movie studio said, oh, it'll never work, it'll never work, it's going to be the end of us. If they, if, they can, if they can have the stories being told in their homes, they'll never go to the theaters again. Well, that panned out, didn't it? I think, and I think about this a lot, that we are going to be absolutely fine so long as we do not fail ourselves in the one fundamental aspect of who it is we are and what we bring to the table. Remember, human beings are manifesting machines. We are just like that, that child watching the episodes of Star Trek, seeing those images, using our imaginations, coming up with a piece of technology that actually serves humanity going forward. Our imaginations always have been, always will be, our continuing link into ourselves in order to make contact with ourselves so that then we might share the beauty of ourselves through culture, with the rest of the world. I genuinely believe that this is a room full of people who are all over that mission. And I would encourage you, over the next days, weeks, and months, to remember the nature of what it is you signed on for. You've come here to make a difference. You've come here to use your imaginations in the service of storytelling. 
doing the same things we have done for, for years and years and years with a new opportunity, with new tools, with a few more bells and whistles. But yeah, it's still and always will be about storytelling. You all have a great conference. Enjoy yourselves and one another. I'll see you next time, but you don't have to take my word for it. <laughs>